what additional things we get we additional things we get here is mucosal neuromas that itself is again a very important mcq point mucosal neuromas are seen in which of the following multiple endocrine neoplasia type right that is meant to be Hi guys, Dr. Patil here and I'm back with one more treasure video. I have picked up one more interesting treasure from the Preparator app. In this treasure, we will be talking about multiple endocrine neoplasia. The moment I say multiple endocrine neoplasia, MEN1, MEN2, MEN3 or if you want to call it as MEN2B and MEN4 comes into our mind. Now what we need to remember here is there are certain specific points which are often tested as MCQs when it comes to MEN, right? So when I say MEN1, we know that it is also called as Wormer syndrome, right? This table summarizes the mutation, the clinical findings, and it also gives you memory aids so that you can remember essential points. Talking about MEN1, it is also called as Wormer syndrome. It is due to mutation in menin, and this menin gene is present on chromosome 11. And clinical manifestations wise, it can pre present with pancreatic adenoma, parathyroid adenoma, and pituitary adenoma. Simplest way of remembering it, right? Now, pancreatic adenomas are basically neuroendocrine tumors. Gastronoma is the most common followed by insulinoma, right? So this gives you first MCQ point. Now among the three manifestations that we spoke about, three P's, pituitary, pancreas and parathyroid, we know that parathyroid is the most commonly affected gland presenting with parathyroid adenoma or hyperplasia. That's the most common as well as earliest manifestation, right? Leading to hyperparathyroidism with symptomatic hypercalcemia. So we get plenty of MCQ points from this statement itself, right? Then there can be pituitary adenomas and particularly you have to remember pituitary adenomas, it's mostly prolactinomas. Most common pituitary adenomas in patients with men one is prolactinomas followed by growth hormone secreting tumors, right? Now when you look at men 2, you call it as Sippel syndrome. It is due to ret mutation which is present on chromosome 10. This like basic thing we should literally buy at it. In case of men 2, we notice that there is pheochromocytoma risk which was not encountered in the men 1. The second thing we notice is medullary carcinoma of the thyroid, again, which is not encountered in men 1. So what is the shared feature here? Hyperparathyroidism. Parathyroid involvement is the shared feature between men 1 and men 2. So this way we can again remember it better. Okay, now what is men 3? Men 3 is also due to RET mutation. RET, as we already know, it is present on chromosome 10. Now, in case of men 3, which is also called as men 2B, there is no parathyroid involvement. So this is helping you to remember, right? So in case of men 2, there is no pituitary involvement. So you had pituitary adenoma in men 1. As, as you come to men 2, pituitary is gone and instead you start talking about medullary carcinoma of the thyroid and pheochromocytoma. And as you move to men 3, parathyroid is no longer involved. Medullary thyroid cancer which was there in men 2 is still there. Pheochromocytoma which was there in men 2 is still there. But hyperparathyroidism is gone in case of men 3 or men 2B, right? What additional things we get? We additional things we get here is mucosal neuromas. That itself is again a very important MCQ point. Mucosal neuromas are seen in which of the following multiple endocrine neoplasia type, right? That is meant to be. Apart from that, these patients have morphonoid habitus. Again, important MCQ point. Which men syndrome is associated with morphonoid habitus? That's meant to be, right? Then these patients have medullated corneal neurofibers. That's again an MCQ point and it is associated with megacolon. Again, one more important MCQ point, right? All these four points can be asked as MCQs. Okay, now the last one that is MEN4. MEN4 is due to CDKN1B mutation, which is present on chromosome 12. Now it is characterized by pituitary involvement, parathyroid involvement and renal involvement. So pituitary involvement is in the form of pituitary adenoma. Again, we are talking about prolactinoma. And second thing is growth hormone secreting adenomas, parathyroid adenoma leading to hyperparathyroidism. And there is involvement of the reproductive organs in the form of testicular cancer or neuroendocrine cervical carcinomas. Right. So these are the important information that you get from the Preplader app going through these treasures. So make use of the treasures optimally so that you prepare well for your upcoming examination. Read through the notes, watch the videos, but for a quick revision, visit the treasures subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from prep ladder